To defeat an enemy, you must know them. Not just their battle tactics, but their history, philosophy. To the Chiss Ascendancy Podcast. Alrighty, hello everyone and welcome back to... <laughs> the Chiss Ascendancy. Episode 62. We made it. <laughs> kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> You've been making that joke. All right. So let me, let's just get this out of the way. Okay. So um, I work at a church, Samuel Tin said church. He's, he's uh, helping at a lot of different areas in the church. And so we just got That's past a very Easter gentle way of putting my involvement. He works a ton at the church. Um, mm-hmm. He's not on staff, but he's there all the time. So much. And he's great at what he does when he's there. So let me just say, we just got done with Easter. (coughs) We just got done with Easter. And so um, happy Easter to everyone out there. I know it's Monday, but uh, Easter has been going on for 2,000 years, (laughs) if you haven't caught on yet. It's also been going on for three weeks. Correct. (laughs) So um, our church is very into, you know. Jesus. uh, (laughs) Yeah, obviously. Um, And they believe in Mm -hmm. what's called... uh, a creative presentation of the gospel. And so we do this big old Easter production. And so we did eight showings, mm. really nine. If you count, um, some of the other stuff, 13, if you on. count all the dress rehearsals. <clears throat> so that being said, uh, my role in the play is a very yelly one. And so my voice is very broken. <laughs> So I'm going to try not to just whisper the entire thing. I'm going to try to talk. and My voice is just going to crack, and it is what it is. I'm a man, and I'm married with to a beautiful wife with two great kids, so I don't have to answer anybody else. Today we're talking it about a few things. It may also be Easter, but it, it was Josiah's birthday as well, so happy birthday to Josiah. Not Thank today. You. It was his birthday Thank on Friday. You. Good Friday. April 2nd. Good Friday. And his social security number is... <laughs> um, <clears throat> so... Um, I was asking Samuel, you know, hey, what do you want to do? We wanted to do a Bad Batch trailer breakdown, and we were like, we're <laughs> What I would really like to do down. is go home and go to bed for three days. Exactly. Um, so, you know what? We're going to watch the new trailer for the Bad Batch. Mm. It comes out May 4th. We're very excited. Mm-hmm. There's some cool stuff coming with it. Um, and so, we're going to watch it. Do more of a reaction, less of a frame-by-frame breakdown. There are a few talking points to break down. Um, but nothing crazy. Also, if you're a stickler for audio on the trailer, you're just going to have to go watch it because I edit all the episodes and I, I don't have the wherewithal to. Well, it's going to play audio. through the television, correct? Yeah, but you know what I mean? It won't be high def. Should I turn the volume up? Where's sure, the volume why you just crank it. I don't know, man. I don't know anything. I don't know where it is. I don't know anything. Oh, there's going to be a remote around here somewhere. Just keep your fingers crossed. All right. Entertain the folks for uh, 25 seconds. Sweet. Uh, so we're working on the production. Uh, it's Easter Story. I played Pontius Pilate, and my role was very poorly written in the fact that it was not at all written. And it just says, uh, Pilate begins to speak, and there's no motivation for what my energy should be or how I'm supposed to portray this character or even what words I should say. Right. And so Josiah just says, you know, do Tarkin. And I was like, all right, I can do that. So I talked to this Tarkin the whole weekend. Yeah. Well, the thing is that... I was going to do a little impression <coughs> for the folks. In the past, when we've had people... You found the remote. Yes, I did. We've had people play Tark or play Tarkin, <laughs> play pilot before... Um, but they're very, there's been people before who were like ragers and mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, the guy was a politician. Like he was not, he mm-hmm. knew his authority mm-hmm. and, uh, maybe a fighter underneath, but he had a presence and I was like, duh, we'll huff Tarkin. We'll huff Tarkin. And so Sam did a great job. Uh, so let's do this. We're going to go into the trailer. Um, and then after we talk about the trailer and we, um, you know, talk about it a little bit, I'm going to uh, be in the trailer. 
Correct. Um, and then I'll do my Tarkin after he does his Tarkin, and the fans can decide whose Tarkin is better. Yeah, Lucasfilm, you need to listen in and hire a Cordy. But it's it's mine. My Tarkin's better. Um, and then I thought we'd talk a little bit. Um, Samuel's uh, been very kind and kind of just let me pick whatever I wanted to talk about for my birthday episode. Um, and so I wanted to talk. It's a little bit cringy, <laughs> but I wanted to talk about the Bounty Hunter Wars by K.W. Jeter. Uh, it's a three-piece uh, with the soda uh, trilogy of books. And, um, we'll go from if, there. If you've seen the documentary murder amongst the Mormons, you're going to be a big fan of this particular episode. <laughs> don't ask me that. Don't, don't ask me that. But he was the best. He was the best. It's hard to artificially manufacture that. So no, Josiah's, Josiah's going to do it. Yeah. Don't ask me that. <laughs> but he was the best. He was very good. There's also you, a certain cadence. I, I think he was just up all night wailing before the documentary. Yeah. I, you know, now that you think about it, he might have just been very, he was very close to the situation. Yeah, I think he was just but very But before we go into shook. full on just Mormon talk, we'll get back to I the matter I can talk about hand. Mormons all day. It's true. All right, here we go. So here's the trailer for The Bad Batch. Mm. Loud it's enough? A, it's, it's a little loud. Five and hands clean. I would like to say before we start, we're seven seconds in, LOL. I would like to say that um, because there are subtitles on, there's a specific name of a character that's important. And we'll talk about that in a second. Right. More capable than an army. Is it time we? Yeah. Yet they exhibit a concerning level of disobedience. So you've got disobedience. the bad batch. Kind of in the training area. There's me. There's me. Our squad's nothing but trouble. And it is going to be taking place after Revenge of the Sith, it seems. No, keep going. Sorry. So, no, sorry. I was going to say. The child that says you're Clone Force 99, the name of that child is Omega. That means, as in like... Uh, as in Alpha and Omega. So the idea is maybe this is, is the last... Is that loosely based on like the... Uh, loosely based on the idea of the old clone books? Not necessarily. I think it's just based on the idea that maybe this is the last clone ever. Got you. I I thought um, that it was Kid Boba for a minute after they kind of run away. You know what I mean? Like they took him under his wing. But yeah, it's but, definitely not Boba. Yeah, Boba's definitely older by this point. This is post Revenge of the Sith, so um, it looks like obviously this is post season seven of the Clone Wars. Post Wars is season actually six. Lobot's origin story. <laughs> Echo does look like Lobot. Um, so, of course, you got your Bad Batch guys here. Uh, Tech Echoes now joined the group post season seven. That's how. That's another hint at as to where we are timeline wise. Uh, Tarkin's looking older, and he has more the military look of the Imperials mm. versus the Republic. Hunter, which is kind of like the Rambo knockoff. Wrecker, which is basically me with a glass eye, <laughs> and um, Crosshair. Kind of the- look how ruggedly handsome Crosshair is, though. Yeah. A little bit um, unkind for my liking, but I mean... Unkindness never shied me away. The personality matches Mm -hmm, the... mm -hmm. Not that he's unkind, he's just kind of arrogant. But yeah, so Omega is the name of this clone. And there have been some people, there's not really a way for me to tell, but there have been some people who have been saying that they think it's a girl. The Mm. The first ever clone of a girl, Jango Fett. And some are wondering if it's a clone of Jango Fett's sister. And if this is the case, then it would hearken to the Republic Commando novels because Jango Fett did have a sister in those. Yeah, but we've kind of confirmed the comics timeline where he's basically like adopted, right? So he would have been kind of estranged from his family. Um, right? Through Mandalorian, we had the chain code. Yes, he was adopted, but he could have found his family. I guess. Just, just hearsay. Yeah. Uh, we are. Hunter. Let's go. Echo. Hyperdrive's online. Tick. 
prepping to jump. I don't think it's a clone just based on how thick the New Zealand accent is. Rika? Echo? Oh, uh, 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 so Tarkin wants them executed. Right. Finnick Shan shows up, which is really cool. Uh, Tarkin doesn't like having anything around that's unpredictable. As far as the examples we've seen of, like, the general clone children, I, I don't think that's a, a clone of the same strand. A familiar voice from Saw Gerrera. Pretty exciting. That taxi reminds me of Sam Wessel's speeder. Mm -hmm. Still a lot of droids around. By it, by it. I would have been fine without the inclusion of a child character. <laughs> by that is kind of funny. We do have already have that going on a little bit from Mando. <clears throat> bad batch. Coors, the bad batch. Coors. So the Death Star. <laughs> Ba 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 ba. Um. So hey, bada, 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 scale bada, bada, bada. of okay. So with things that are coming out soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Bad Batch. Kenobi's filming officially. Mm -hmm. Um. Star Wars released a uh, cast of that show, which looks really promising. It's nice mm -hmm. to see the. Um. It's just nice to. I know we knew Hayden Christensen would be in it, but it's nice to see him like officially, officially in there. Mm -hmm. um, I've missed him. Was disappointed like that we did not see Ahmed Best on the crew, but it's fine. You know, you're disappointed to see that. I'm disappointed not to see Natalie Portman. We're all disappointed. <laughs> That's true. Um, and maybe, I mean, it makes sense that there are some that they're keeping from the light, you know. Obviously, like having Tamora Morrison shown in Mandalorian Season 2, and we're like, oh, it's probably Boba Fett. I'm glad that Mark Hamill's name was not mentioned you know what I mean? It was cool to have just see him. Yeah. Um, okay, so... To be uh, fair, it was barely Mark Hamill. I don't think so. I think he did everything. They had somebody else stand in for the body, right? I don't think so. I think he did it. Interesting. And they, they changed his face. Um, so, if you have Bad Batch, Obi-Wan, Andor, Ahsoka, Mandalorian Season 3, Book of Boba Fett, the Acolyte, a few others. Um, where does Bad Batch land on your spectrum probably, of excitement? Probably like three. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That low? No, I mean like... Oh, third? Yeah. Okay, okay. Not on a scale of one to ten. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, what makes you so excited about it? Uh, I One, I'm a Tarkin fanboy, um, so I'm excited Will, to... Huff. Will, I'm excited Huff. for him to get some prominent... Uh, it, exposure because we kind of had him in the clone wars but he was still b-roll yeah um i like and i can't tell i like the idea of having him as a primary villain because he is a better villain than he was i mean he's been made into a better villain you know what i mean like especially mm -hmm. through the novelization and i don't think george ever meant for him to be taken this far but right he's just got so much depth as a character that i think there's a lot there to explore and a lot to be appreciated yeah um and is it me or good, is he like remarkably cool small in the trailer? Um, I seem to remember him being taller. You know what I mean? But maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it says Mark Hamill's Luke Skywalker doesn't have anybody. Is his, uh, oh, uh, double for Jedi, Max Lloyd Jones. Maybe for the big stuff. Mm -hmm. Will you look up how tall Tarkin is supposed to be? I, yeah. He's got to be six foot. The thing is, Tamura Morrison is like 5'10". And I know six that... 6'1". Yeah. Tarkin's 6'1"? So, yeah, he should be taller. So are shock troopers like super troopers? Because Tamura Morrison's like, what, 5'8", tops? 5'9"? Yeah, I think he's 5'9 or 5'10". I know that Jango Fett as a character is supposed to be like 6 foot or something like that. But even still, if Tarkin was 5'10 and, and 
I don't know, he just looks so much. It's even if Tarkin is supposed to be five ten and Clone Trooper supposed to be six foot, he looks about four or five inches shorter than the Clone Troopers or Shock Troopers, I guess. Let's see. Uh, Jango Fett is supposed to be six foot. Okay. But Tamora Morrison, five nine, uh, five ten. Uh, let me look. Five seven. Oh wow! So I was even overshooting. How um. How tall is uh, Tarkin supposed to be? Six one. Oh, okay. Yeah, the character Tarkin. So he should be taller than the clones. I mean, yeah. maybe maybe shorter because of a helmet. Yeah. But he's drastically smaller. That is weird. I wonder why they did that. Okay, so um, so what are your top three then? If Bad Batch is third, it's interesting. Uh, Peter Cushing is six foot, or was six foot, so his character was taller. But still, yeah, should have been six one. Yeah. Anyway, um, we really fixated on that for a while. That's okay. Uh, what was if, your question? If you have Obi Wan show, uh, Obi Wan, uh, Mandalorian coming back, and then Bad Batch. Really? Yeah. Bad Batch more than Ahsoka? Yeah, way more. I, but Ahsoka I, is I, the bridge. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm still going to have to tolerate more Ahsoka to get to mm. Thrawn. And that's just going to be an unbearable ride for me. I'm going to like where we're going, but um, I'm just not an Ahsoka fanboy. And I wish I liked her character more. You know what I mean? It right. Would, what about the book of Boba Fett? That's up there for me. That's up there for me. I want to see what they do with it. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, my anticipation is high. The Andor series, I'm not like super stoked on. I was um, more stoked on I never it. got attached to that character. Yeah, me neither. I was more stoked on it when I thought that K2 might be in yeah, it. Yeah, with, with no K2, I'm just like... K2's like... Way down on my list. My favorite character from Rogue One. Yeah, he's easily the best. Bad Batch has one of my other favorite characters from Rogue One, Saw Gerrera. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot going on. Um, I don't know if I would you like noticed, to see but the Captain, middle... Captain Rex... Yeah. Is in the trailer? I would like to see the middleman Saw Gerrera because we had him as like a young idealist with almost no life experience, kind of just fighting for what he knew was right because he didn't see any alternative. Right. And then we just saw straight, you know, all the way on the opposite side of the extreme Borgullet, you know, freaking mm-hmm. completely gone Forrest Whitaker eye. You know what I mean? It was just, right. he was gone. So I want to yeah. see what that transition looked like or maybe what led him to being so jaded. And I expect that he might make an appearance in the Andor series as well. Yeah, probably. Well, I, I feel, mean, maybe. It, even even if just like by name, you know what I mean? I want to know oh, what he's he'll up definitely to. make an appearance by name. Um, it's interesting because um, in the Andor series, yeah, that's probably the one I'm almost least excited for. But I, I, I think that it will impress me beyond what I'm expecting, which is nice. Yeah, and... and so far, all the Disney produced TV shows have been great. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, yeah, I didn't particularly care for the portrayal of Ahsoka, mainly because I get fixated on how short her head tails are. They should be way longer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like the f- fight choreography was undercooked. Yeah. If that makes sense. Well, just you told me I'm Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. For me, it's like, okay, hang on. So, Darth Sidious, the Dark Lord of the Sith, the strongest Force user we see on screen in Star Wars Saga. Mm -hmm. He goes toe-to-toe with Sidious in Season Mm 5. And Sidious is in control the entire time, but Maul is there. Mm -hmm. Maul has defeated Qui-Gon. Maul has defeated Obi-Wan. A couple times, yeah. They kind of go back and forth. Back and forth. Mostly Obi-Wan wins, though. Correct, correct. Um... And then somehow Ahsoka's better than Maul in season seven, if not just because yeah, of his pride. It was circumstantial at best. Maul had her. I agree. You know what I mean? What I'm saying is <clears throat> what I'm saying is someone who is at least there in a fight with Maul, mm-hmm. why the freak was it even competitive with that lady with the spear? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. She should have just pulled a load in Great Storm and just threw her 45 <laughs> feet in the air. Yeah, I never understand why. Why don't Force users throw everyone 45 <laughs> feet in the air? <laughs> it sounds even funnier because my squeaker's gone. <laughs> yeah, I just... 
we talked about this maybe a dozen times on the show, but yeah. I just, I never can quite wrap my mind around the fact that anybody can stand toe to toe with a force user, like maybe like force sensitive, like they're just kind of figuring things out and they get, you know, they blow their steam pretty quick, but like a lifelong, well-trained yeah you know what i mean like has everything in their advantage all the sliders are turned up to 100 you know what i mean they shouldn't miss a, a three anywhere on the court yeah and they're just i don't know man it's just i can't, I can't it really blows wrap my, my mind, mind because it. yeah it's, it shouldn't be it's like um, you kind of used a sports analogy but if you take, isn't that backwards i'm using the sports analogies today here if we are if you were to take a freaking guy that rides the bench in the NBA. Right. And you put him in any other league in the world. Let's say even the WNBA. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you take a WNBA player and you take her to any high school or college game, guys or girls, and she's going to make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, so Jedi, there's like 10,000 or something um, during the Republic era, and they're so powerful. Just to me, it was just, I know that it, there needs to be a fight for the show. Right. I don't know. I feel like Vader's the only one using his force power correctly. But it's just like. In Rogue One. Choke everything. Choke yeah. everyone. Um, yeah, I need more High Republic force using dude, fix. Yeah. There's a Specifically from Light of the Jedi. Specifically yeah. from there's that a, novel. There's a moment in one of the books called Light of the Jedi where there's a Jedi Master who's looking for like four or five people in a you crowd. Know, Loden Great Storm, he's only Jedi Knight? Yeah. Not a Jedi Master. Just a Jedi and Knight. And he picks up... Dude, here's the ball in part. He's with his Padawan, right? And uh, he decides that this is the best way to locate him. And he just says, Padawan, protect me. And then closes his eyes and locates with the force by the feel of their emotions, the people that are trying to hide, picks them up to a height high enough to drop them from to maim and seriously injure them without murdering them. And just does it like seven or eight people. Yep. It's a beautiful thing. And I was like, this is all I've ever wanted from Star Wars. Yeah. It was great. It was. Yeah. Why did not, <clears throat> why didn't Ahsoka pick that lady up and just. Maybe because she's not a Jedi. I don't know, maybe. So, um, that going along those lines, Book of Boba Fett is coming out, mm -hmm. and we don't know where it's going to go necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, I know that Disney is very good, and Star Wars has always been very good of like, let's make sure we get everything we can get as yeah. far as product well, and, and experience out of what's next, which is the Bad right. Batch. And I'm very invested in how it all ties back into where Mando left off, because it's my understanding that all these shows are going to lead back to that. Right. So my thought is, I since you were so gracious to let me pick, um, I wanted to go back to my first ever Star Wars book, um, which is book one of the Bounty Hunter Wars. It's a thickie. Um, let me see. I've never uh, full disclosure for all the fans at home. I'm probably it's not that long, yeah, but it feels. I think big. it's just I think it's just fat paper. Um, I'm in the same book. Uh, same book, same boat as probably most of you guys, because I've not read the Bounty Hunter Wars. Um, so I'm just going to be asking the questions that you guys are all thinking. Yeah, and I will remember to it's the best of my ability. It's less than 400 pages, so. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty light read. I mean, my standards for <laughs> what a light read yeah. is are really high, but. So, same as working on his master's degree right now, guys, so don't feel bad. 387 pages for the Mandalorian Armor. <laughs> book two is called Slave Ship. Um, it's kind of going back in time. The artwork on these is actually really cool. Pretty good artwork, uh, by, uh, rule of two standards. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blows away rule of tool stuff. And it's consistent, <laughs> which is the key. Um, uh, yeah. Vader with Dengar, Boba Fett, and this girl's name is Neela. She's actually very important to the story. And then, um, on slave ship, for some reason, R fives on there. Do people <laughs> ever end up uh, kneeling down to her? Actually. Yes. Nailed it. Um, Bosk. Very heavy-handed with the uh, then, foreshadowing. Um, <laughs> if you don't know who this, if you're watching via video, if you don't know who this green character is, Mind this is team? Prince Shizor. Oh, yeah. A Falene. A Falene character who is the leader of Black Sun. If you're not familiar with the Falene, they are a uh, I also love how the art wraps around to the back. 
Oh yeah, that on is all cool. three books. Um, the so coolest look, thing about them is that they uh, are in complete control of their pheromones, and they, correct, especially on humans and of the opposite gender. Um, assuming that uh, you stand by the old one two, uh, have strong effect on the emotions and will of the other person. So there's in uh, betrayal a falling Jedi who can combine like mind tricks and uh his pheromones to make a, a woman do basically whatever he wants as far as him being able to convince her to like get out of her airspeeder so that they can evacuate stuff right like that. right um so the the books will have artwork that wraps around to the back which is cool um and i want to say the the ship on the back of slave ship is the punishing one i think that's she's worse ship it's a very cool looking ship mm. Um, and then book three is called Hard Merchandise. This is a term, if you read this trilogy, you're going to get sick to death of hard merchandise. Is that like buying and selling rocks? Uh, hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, the, on the cover here, a royal guard, the emperor, Bosque, some sand troopers, which is actually important, and Boba Fett again. So it is rocks? Nope. I guess hard merchandise it's hard to explain, but basically it's like um, bounty hunting. You gotcha. know, lives are being transported. Hard merchandise is like, um, you know, dead or alive type mm-hmm. things. Like big, big deals. Yeah. Hard merchandise. By the way, I did not mean to inadvertently besmirch the character of the Falling Jedi I referenced. I'm sure he doesn't use his uh, combined powers inappropriately. Hmm. <laughs> The way I framed that made it sound very uh, clandestine. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so Boba Fett is my favorite character. Mm-hmm. Um, we've heard the whole story and all that stuff. Uh, it all started with a t-shirt back in like 97. Um, and so <laughs> when I started really getting into Star Wars for my own, I just remember having seen my first exposure to the original trilogy was the special edition re-release. And so there's that moment where right. Boba Fett yeah, Boba just Fett was already in there. You remember that? Yeah. And that's not in the original cut. So when Boba Fett walks across the screen and pauses, I was like, "That's the guy on my shirt." And so, um, Boba Fett has just guided me to many Star Wars literature journeys. For instance, my favorite series is the Legacy of the Force series. And Boba Fett's on the cover of the second book, Bloodlines, by Karen Travis. And I bought that book and read it before I read the first book. <laughs> and I was Not like, to be mistaken by uh, Bloodlines by, by Claudia Gray. Yeah. In my opinion, Bloodlines by Karen good. Travis is better just because I like the characters better. There is something to be said for the way it, it definitely feels different. You know, yeah, the oh, definitely. It's very different. Definitely. It's very much more exploratory. Yeah. Well, my thing is, don't crucify me, but... I'm not that big of a Leia fan. She grows on me. I, I love yeah, her. Right. And I, I was very upset when Gary Fisher passed away, but I'm she, she's not she does not inspire me the way that she inspires a lot of people. Mm. Um, not enough hope. I'm trying to think of. You need more hope. Yeah, probably. Rebellions are built on hope. Yeah. Um, as you you well found out if you listen to uh, or read a certain point of view based oh on oh my god dude Ruben. the forty five times <laughs> they say that freaking empire it was uh, pretty rough a lot of hope in that book yeah that book sucked there were probably five good stories tooth and claw tooth and which claw which is what I wanted to talk about so that was my uh, segue <laughs> okay so um i so, loved that story but it was fantastic i was just thinking about uh, it because bounty hunter stuff yeah so the bounty hunter wars it, it's a dual timeline um trilogy which I, I people don't like that but i like it um the book last shot by daniel Jose older is a dual timeline novel mm-hmm. i really liked it people I, I guess people really hate that i'm reading the legend of luke by brian jakes and it's a dual timeline book and i i, I like, like it um well like Dooku Jedi Lost, that was like multiple timelines. You know yeah. what I mean? Or um Okay, but the I think the difference is Dooku is like 
this happened and then 10 years later this happened and then five years later this happened and you have the one thing like let's say you're having a i don't right. know, do spoilers but it's like you have an interview and they're going back and watching videos right, 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 right. <laughs> well i mean it kind of wasn't it kind of wasn't because it was following um his life as a padawan right and then it was following his life as you know count dooku yeah you know what i mean because it wasn't like this happened and then this happened because of it you know it was kind of right you're kind of finding out both stories at the same time. Yeah, that's true. This one is weird because it's current day, quote mm-hmm. unquote, and then you'll go back 10 years before or whatever. There's a Malcolm before. in the Middle episode like that where uh, you get there at the end of a feud that Malcolm and Reese have, like a prank war. Mm-hmm. And then gradually throughout the episode, there's like a little cutaway where they like play each preceding prank. Oh, leading, yeah, up, yeah, yeah, leading yeah. up at the end of the episode to the very oh, okay. first prank, which was Malcolm eating one of Reese's blueberries, which seems very innocuous, but it went up from there. It went all the way up. That's funny. Broken pelvis. Oh my god. For Reese. And that then, sounds terrible. Yeah. Um. So the book starts in the Mandalorian armor. Um. I'm in the bookstore. I'm at Barnes and Noble, whatever, and I'm like, oh, Boba Fett's on it. I can tell by the state of your collection that that book's gotten the most love. Yeah, out of those two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've reread this one probably three times. But the other ones, I was like, it's something happens. But this is the most important one. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the story of how Boba Fett initially survived the Sarlacc. Um, and that's cool because we still don't know. What tell them tell him why you wanted to talk about Boba Fett on Easter. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not to be sacrilegious. <laughs> but obviously, Easter is the celebration of Jesus' sacrifice death on the cross saving the world by living a perfect life and dying for our sins and then on the third day just as he promised he rose from the dead and so i said not to be sacrilegious or weird but i'd like to talk about how boba fett also survived (laughs) i like how you really wanted to save yourself from the sacrilege by really expounding upon what easter is about before you go okay obviously (laughs) easter is the more important story but the Mandalorian armor is cool. <laughs> oh my god! Um, so <clears throat> there are so many factions in this book because you have you have Boba Fett, who is his own faction. <laughs> all I can think, all I can think about is, wow, he must have been near the explosion. That's funny. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so Boba Fett, you know, he's by himself. Mm-hmm. And then you have the other bounty hunters. Like, mm-hmm. we'll just leave them out of it. But the Empire plays a role. Of course. Um, Black Sun under Prince Shizor plays a role. Papa Shizor. Shizor. Um, the Rebellion and the Empire, they're going back and forth. Did you guys Empire know that versus... Tinsel can cut through prison bars? Really? Yeah. I saw the elves do it. In uh, Santa Claus. Oh my freaking god! Dad gummit Samuel, <laughs> totally got me off track for a stupid joke. I can't believe you fell for it. <laughs> that was like, right after I made the Papa Shisho reference. I was right there. Basically dead. I don't. <laughs> I'm not catching references right now. Okay, but with the Empire Black Sun. Oh. Um, and then you also have okay. <laughs> If you ever wanted to know, God bless. <laughs> if you ever wanted to know what goes on at Kua Drive Yards, this is your trilogy. <laughs> Boy, do I ever. Because. And how. <laughs> and how. Uh. It's weird because certain parts of my voice aren't tired. I could probably scream into this microphone and it would go through. But my regular voice is just <laughs> worn out so man kuwa drive yards is just a cesspool of murder and deceit kuwa drive yards is basically a giant <laughs> game of thrones um so kuwa drive yards is crazy and then there... your voice sounds like somebody continuously opening and closing a rusty gate <laughs> i sound like my squeak is gone <laughs> goodbye woody um and then there's a, a guy who is called the, uh, I can't remember what they call him, but he, his was name is, no, his name was Kudar Mubat. 
And here's the thing. Okay, mm. so there is an audio Oh, book. yes. I do remember Kudar Mubat from yes. the time that I was in your car for 15 minutes while you were listening to it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Josiah Daigle, if you're listening to this, shout out. Um, there is an audio book for this. But in the 90s, my friend, <laughs> they were not doing full length. Everything was um, abridged, which sucks. <laughs> which is why... A uh, little bit of news. They're re-releasing uh, some of the Legends books. Yeah. Um, we think we posted this on Instagram, didn't we? Mm -hmm. um, so they're posting some of the Legends, the Legends, what do they call them? Legends Essentials? Yeah. Um, and they're putting new cover art. So my favorite Star Wars book, Path of Destruction, has new cover art, Heir to the Empire, probably like number two or three on my list, new cover art, and then Shatterpoint. Um is getting new cover art which it kind of looks okay for like revamp cover art not a huge fan of that particular well the thing is is it finalized is that the one yeah okay here's the thing is that you have a character right it's all about mace windu and the covers mace windu i get that i just didn't it, like he's the, doing he's kind of performing yeah, shatter point I, I i get it but anyway yeah it just looks compared to how cool the others look i feel right. like it could look cooler yeah, I feel like... But anyway, a uh, fully unabridged audio performance of Shatterpoint for the first time. First time. Thinking Big that. deal. Yeah. yeah. So the audiobooks back in the day used to all be abridged. And so the problem with that is that you get through a story in three hours, but you don't get all the points. So there are things that you're like, uh, what's going on with this? And it seems like when a book is abridged, reoccurring themes are a thing. So like, it feels like it's just every 30 minutes... You hear Boba Fett say, it's easy, you know, because it's not, it's from the 90s. Mm -hmm. So it's not Timur Morrison's voice. There's no, it doesn't sound like a clone. He's As just, you wish. Yeah. It's not a big deal. That's his voice, basically. <clears throat> so uh, the assembler, that's his name. And the guy that reads the book, he talks like this. And he's going to have a meeting with the one and only. Kudar Mubat. Kudar Mubat. It's almost like a guy trying to do a Christopher Walken impersonation reading a Star Wars book. It's no, it's no big deal. Kudar Mubat. Um, so anyways. It's like he's doing that, but he's also trying to order it like a Pakistani restaurant and wants to get the pronunciations right. Mm. Kudar Mubat. So um, the cool thing about the story is that... <clears throat> <clears throat> when the book starts, the first book, sorry, a lot of that going on. Uh, but the the beginning, the, the driving force is what is the point of Boba Fett getting back from the dead, surviving the Sarlacc pit? Where is he going to go from here? How is he going to use that? How do we disappear? Exactly. And it's like we're seeing through our own eyes. It's Lateral like lines. Hypnotized. Um for the pillar fans out there, there you go. All one of you. Um, so the thing is, um, it's not as like though, right as there. Boba Fett is healing on the you know in the caves of the sand dunes of Tatooine, he's actually rescued by Dengar, mm -hmm. which is a pretty cool thing. Um, he just tossed him a line of toilet paper. Yep, grab onto my head. Yanked him on out of there. Yeah. So he's surviving, and uh, there's also this girl that is. Um, she was like a slave girl that worked for Jabba that somehow survived. And her is name Nila? is, it's Neela. Nailed it. Um, and she's had a memory wipe. So she doesn't know anything basically before like 10 days before. Classic C-3PO. Exactly. Um, so what happens is somehow, I can't remember how it all lines up, but. Is there anything canon where somebody gets like an organic memory wipe? I guess aside from Borgolet. <laughs> but that kind of drives the person insane more. I can't remember. I don't know. I, I can seem to remember hearing about that. So um, the idea is Boba Fett is like the centerpiece of this crazy web of stories where um, Kudarmu Bot, who's the assembler, is working for Prince Zizor. Mm -hmm. But Kudarmu Bot is an arachnoid character. And the way that he, yeah, the way that he... Um, makes things work is he basically has a giant web in space oh yes 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 and um he has all the these what are called nodes basically children of his that are attached to his web 
and he communicates with them and that's how business gets done. And he's kind of a go between for people who are purchasing hard merchandise, basically things that are like, you know, you need someone killed or you need someone brought back or whatever. He has excreted enough organic material to connect him physically to somebody in a different solar system. He basically has a giant web. Is it like philotic or is it like actual tangible? No, no, no. It, it's, it's, he's actually built like this giant web from and his it, butt. And it goes like between planets? No, 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 no. It's, imagine it's an asteroid of sorts. It's still huge, but Man, it's not like from here to Mars. So much. Yeah. Excrement. I mean, I guess it's not technically excrement, but anyways, yeah. Still. From his butt. Uh, so yeah, there's actually a really cool picture. Even if it was just urine. Oh, yeah. I wish I could have found the picture beforehand, but there's a really cool picture from uh, the reader's uh, guide, reader's companion or whatever, uh, to Star Wars literature, where uh, it's actually a picture of Boba Fett talking to Kudar Mubat, and he's a very, very large arachnoid character. And um, he has these nodes that he also His has created. His face looks like uh, that one character from Treasure Planet. Yes. The Beetle. Mr. Uh, what's his name? So um, <clears throat> he has this system of people. And basically there's one. Scroop. Yes. There's one node that has disconnected itself. And he does not know named Balance Sheet. And Balance Sheet. So I'm ends sorry. up killing Kudar Mubat. Is the is this spider web? Is it just on one planet? It's in space. S- is my understanding? So his web is an asteroid. Correct. Have you looked up Kudar Mubat? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Okay, cast the picture up on the screen. Okay. Picture of him talking to Boba Fett. Yeah, I accidentally did the thing where. So this character, again, that's one of the reasons that books are so cool is because you can do something really crazy that doesn't, it would be harder to be like, just show it on screen. Um, but there is a picture from the reader's, reader's companion guide or whatever it is, this really cool book um, that kind of fleshes out what characters look like from the novels. So you have your mental picture of what a character looks like, which is really neat. And then you get to look at like, here's what... You know, here's what this character from Republic Commando looks like. Oh, this is what Kudar Mubat looks like from the Bounty Hunter Wars trilogy. And so you're learning how Boba Fett survived the Bounty Hunter Wars. And my uh, computer is too old to you cast only, up there. You can only airplay sound, yeah. Okay. Uh, I would do it, but my phone's currently doing this. Yeah. So um, the story goes that Boba Fett joins the bounty hunters guild being paid by um i can't remember if he knows i don't think he knows who's paying him Caesar is is paying kudar mubat to be the middleman but kudar mubat Bo- does not tell boba fett that that's his upper upper boss and so kudar mubat um hires boba fett to invade uh the bounty hunters guild <coughs> And in the middle of this, Kratos, who is Bosk's dad, is all about it. Bosk is not happy about it. And um, Bosk ends up killing and eating his dad and becoming the leader of the Bounty Hunters Guild. And what he does when he when he does that is he solidifies himself as the number one bounty hunter in the galaxy in his eyes because Boba Fett works for him. Mm. And so it's this ongoing web of lies and deceit. Um, where Boba Fett starts working with someone like Zuckus. Zuckus actually gets a lot of playtime in this series. And there's a moment where, like, for instance, uh, Boba Fett steals um, Bosk's ship with Zuckus' help. And then before he shoots Bosk out of the air, out of the uh, escape pod, he, um, here we go, in the middle of him, here you go. It's kind of blurry if you're watching online. Uh, but yeah, so Kudar Mubat. that's Kudar Mubat on the left. Obviously, Boba Fett's on the right. And so what you're seeing around there, this is all created by him. Okay. 
So I still need to ask one more clarifying question. Okay, go ahead. So he exists on a butt asteroid. <laughs> I, I believe so, yes, if and recollection then, serves. What? It just connects to other stuff? Like other planets? The butt asteroid connects? There's just other sp- little baby spiders on the butt asteroid? Right. And he couldn't have just like gone to pay balance sheet a visit? Balance sheet is a part of the web, but he depended on balance sheet for too long. And so basically what ends up happening is balance sheet learns how to disconnect himself from the web without him knowing. And he ends up killing basically his dad, mm-hmm. which is Kudar Mubat. But all these little spiders you see here on the right, those are all, they all serve a purpose. So imagine he's communicating and he's like the middle ground for Boba Fett to kill somebody and bring him there and then he'll ship so that person. So he's essentially valuable as a middleman because he's something of a hive mind. So he can balance a lot of things at once. Yeah. Okay. It's not... Th- not quite a hive mind, strictly Well, speaking, it's very but. close. One of the big deals is balance sheet approaches Fett for a partnership and Fett is like, you're not fooling me. Kudar Mubat's speaking through you. And balance sheet reaches back and grabs a strand of web that's disconnected and he says no i've severed the tie and i know that as soon as he discovers this he can kill me but if i have the element of surprise i can destroy him interesting and i will be the new okay. kudar Mubat. i'm up to speed it took me a while to understand it yeah it's just by itself it's very strange and it doesn't is make... it like vacuum sealed uh Has some sort of atmosphere it has to have some sort of atmosphere because they're living in it. I mean, Fett's there. Maybe it's something like a, uh, what's the space worm called? The ones that exist in asteroids. Right, right, right. The ones that can create atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Exogorth? There it is. Um, so basically, Zizor wants to... Uh, disband the bounty hunters guild to create a vacuum of power there so that he can hire the best ones or basically cause trouble for the empire because at some point in this series it the power of black sun is comparable to the empire Hmm. which is again this is the 90s when we didn't have a grasp on some things right so now you're looking back in 2021 and you're like, yeah, here's the thing. I've seen Exegol. I don't believe anyone has that many. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But at the time, if an author in a book in the 90s said, and Black Sun had spread towards the underbelly of the Empire so great that at any moment it could take over, that's just, it is what it was. Right. And so um, Zizor works for the Emperor directly mm-hmm. because he's a prince of, a, of his planet. But he's also the leader of Black Sun, but they don't know that. Of course, the Emperor knows, but Caesar thinks he has a one-up on him. And there's a bitter rivalry throughout the trilogy between Vader and Caesar. And Vader hates him, and he doesn't know why the Emperor keeps him around if they both know he's you know, fishy. Mm-hmm. Um, but Classic Vader stuff. Obviously, Palpatine, one of the reasons he keeps him around is to keep Vader on his toes. Classic Palpatine stuff. Exactly. Um So, basically, by the time it's all said and done, um, the leaders of the Kuat drive yards who are making all the ships for the Empire are waiting to see who will win at the Battle of Endor because it's very important to them to see who will win. And then they will immediately throw their lot in with that group, which Mm -hmm. will cripple the other group but keep Kuat drive yards going. Mm -hmm. Um, And Neela is actually like freaking a princess from Kuat who is going to end up ruling Kuat drive yards. And so she's been brainwashed and all this kind of stuff. It's like this big story. And the sad thing is there are so many elements that could have been a great series Mm -hmm. or trilogy. Um, But I feel like there's just so much going on. That's why a lot of people, it's forgettable for a lot of folks. Mm. Um, I was reading a review the other day just for funsies, and it was like... Was it by our main man? uh, No. It was on Goodreads, so I don't know who it was by. I was just reading it. We should see if he Um, did a review. But it was saying... uh, Do you remember the guy's name? No. Just look up... um, Outbound Flight? No, not Outbound Flight. Uh, 
Survivor's Quest. But basically, it goes like, if you like uh, reading stuff like the word barve or hard merchandise or hearing Boba Fett say, don't worry, it's easy, this is the <laughs> book for you, which, of course, those are three things that I love. Um, so by the end of it, Boba Fett, again, is working by himself. He never really was working with anybody. He doesn't really trust anybody. He barely trusts Dengar by the end of all this, and Dengar saved his freaking life. Um, and... Uh, Dengar in the story, all he wants, the reason he become one of the reasons that he is a bounty hunter is because he wants to pay off debt so that he can um, retire and live with his wife. But he has this huge debt that he has to pay off, and the only way that he has the skills to get the money is to be a bounty hunter. So you get to know Dengar a little bit deeper as a character, which is pretty cool. Um, but basically, this is this trilogy in itself is the reason for me. Why it's hard for me to see Boba Fett and Bosk working together? Because in the back of my mind, yeah, they have a pretty staunch rivalry. I'm thinking series. about the rivalry from this trilogy, which is crazy. How this trilogy, which is so goofy and like whack and mediocre, really, if you think about it, I'm having a uh, quite a bit of trouble finding this. Uh, it's it, it's funny how this becomes like the blueprint for how Boba Fett and Bosk relationship is. Not Clone Wars, not any canon novels. It's the freaking Bounty Hunter War trilogy. Um, but basically, things become unraveled. Um, Black Sun obviously begins to fall apart. Kuat Drive Yards throws in their... Uh, they kind of decide whatever will make shifts for whoever. And uh, Boba Fett comes out on top. Bo- Bosk is obviously still second best. Um, and so it's really... It's a pretty interesting story. It's not uh, Good God, scared the crap out of me. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to find it. I want it bad. But yeah, what are your... So I know you haven't read it yet, so what are your questions? Most of my questions were about the Bud Asteroid. I was just trying to... I was having trouble reconciling the idea of somebody excreting that much organic material, even a large species over a series of several years. Right. Like, that is so much. I, I don't remember ever poop. hearing how old he is but it's very old uh, just like the, even if it's like a nano web you know what i mean like yeah it's freaking... but imagine okay see how tiny these little eggs are right here mm-hmm. and see how big he is it's the same species so right he's been so around no, like god that, knows how long that, i mean the way it is designed totally makes sense to me but i thought you were just like andy sends a non-voy to corazon and they're connected by a butt rope no 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 that's where I was caught up. In my mind, the web is so large that he has, I mean, he does have places for like slave one and stuff to land, mm-hmm. to bring things. Um, and then there's like a random rogue stormtrooper. This is parts of the story that are like way heavy handed. There's a stormtrooper, right? A regular stormtrooper. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not freaking Tarkin, a stormtrooper. Uh, Found it. Neil Fassant or something like that. And he's gone rogue and he's abandoned the empire. And it is like a billion dollar reward to get this guy's head back because he knows all the Imperial secrets you could ever want. And it's like, guys, he's a, he's Mm -hmm. a private, you know what I mean? Like he's Mm -hmm. just a regular guy, but in there, um, in this series, it's like a big deal to have made it into the rank of stormtrooper. And obviously, so it's, it's, if you're going to read it, just read it for what it is, read it to read the trilogy and to, and to read some fun stories. Cause they are fun stories, but they do not apply to what is star Wars canon. So if you're reading these books, just kind of go in having an open mind and it is what it is. And this is who Boba Fett is in this timeline. Um, but it does make me wonder if any of the elements of this series will be used in the book of Boba Fett. I really hope that in the book of Boba Fett, we find out how he survived. Um, yeah, totally. You know, my main, con- I, I would like to see that. I want to know is book of Boba Fett from Mandalorian forward. Are we going to get any flashbacks to how he survived? Cause that's really what everybody wants to know. Well, and I think there. I don't know there's there are just a lot of questions you know what i mean like one what's his escape look like uh two why was he on tatooine so long you know what i mean like yeah what, what took him so long to kind of get i mean the galaxy's greatest bounty hunter couldn't find his own armor on the planet that he already knew where he was at you know what i mean yeah 
Um, why does he have sand people weapons? How did he acquire those? Yeah. Is like, he are, living among the sand people right. when the Mandalorian is right there next to him? Right. Because you wouldn't know the difference if you were wearing Tex- uh, Texans. <laughs> Tuscan garb. Um, so it's really interesting, this balance that takes place. Um, there's some point in the series where um, Caesar has... How does this work? Caesar is trying to... Oh my gosh, I can't even remember. There's something having to do with film of the killing and destruction of the Lars homestead that Caesar wants to give to Luke. And he's trying to blackmail the empire or something. It's just, I feel like where this went wrong is it's one of those movies that you see the cast and you're Mm -hmm. like, wow, that's like 12 really good actors. And then it ends up being the story just doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. So all the actors, it's like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, there's too many players for it to be weird good. Storyline. Yeah. You know, and then every once in a while you get a fantastic Mr. Fox where it's just perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's really, really it's, it's, I like the series mm-hmm. one for nostalgia because I can remember being in sixth grade and having deer days, drop everything and read days in English. And so people would be like, well, I, I guess I'll do my homework. I guess I'll do this. And I'll be like, I will be in the corner with my I remember getting armor. to have those days. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty good. It's funny because like, okay, listen, here's a line. I just don't, barely opened it up. That's how most people read their Bible. Um, on page 308, it says. Uh, That's easy. It says. uh Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Those are the ones I'm going to enjoy getting rid of. An ugly smile showed on Kratosk's face as though he were already relishing the details of that process. The younger bounty hunters mm-hmm. could almost be excused for being stupid. They haven't been around long enough to know any better. But the others, the veteran bounty hunters who've thrown in their lot with them, they could have predicted how I'd react to their treachery, their assault upon the sanctity of our brotherhood. So that's a pretty cool line, right? Listen mm-hmm. to this. Zuckus rolled his eyes. Did he? I can't. He's a grand. They're freaking flies. It was just as well that Kratos did not see the reaction. He'd found out the brotherhood. Uh, he'd found out that the brotherhood with and carnivores. Suckus smeared poop into his own eyes out of exasperation. Yeah, it was just it was crazy. Flies are gross. They are gross. But it is really neat. Um, And it kind of ties into what will the Book of Boba Fett look like, you know? Mm. Dude, I would be freaking ecstatic if a character like Kudar Mubat was on screen for some reason. I don't think it'll happen. It's a cool concept. But it's a cool concept. He's kind of basically the middleman. If somebody doesn't want to get their... Yeah. If someone doesn't want to get their hands dirty, they talk to this guy who will talk to kind of the scum and villainy, you know? And he basically, the same way that Rebels introduced that concept of Fulcrum, he's basically Fulcrum. Yeah. You know what I uh, I wish would be talked about more is the way that Munes are involved in the galaxy. Like uh, Darth Bane had that Mune broker who basically conducted all his business by proxy. You know right. what I mean? But they, they're doing that for like all the important people in the galaxy. I guess it's kind of touched on in the prequel trilogy a little bit when it's the banking plan will sign your treaty treaty. but you know what i mean i feel like they're pretty influential species that doesn't get thought about very much yeah they definitely don't get enough love um and then you get a book like plagueis which like dives into it Mm -hmm. and then that's it and then no more do you know what's crazy is that on these star wars book facebook groups um there are people who are like Barely trudged my way through Darth Plagueis. Yeah, I don't get that at all. Now I'm going to read Rebel Rising about Jyn Erso. Can't wait. Um, It just blows my mind. Not nearly enough hope in Plagueis. No hope. Yeah. Um, I think also... That book is so good. I know. I get a lot of complaints. We're in this now. I get, I get a lot of complaints about Thrawn stuff because it's so detail-oriented. Nope. Poop on you. <laughs> if you don't plan ahead, then doom on you. Doom on you. Doom on you. 
Here goes our last female. <laughs> um, so the bounty hunter wars, man, it's just a freaking. It's it's. What, what do I say? <laughs> That's you know? just in showing how many times you've gone. So the bounty hunter wars. It's oh, back well, to the top. Both again. off kilter. Um, but oh. dude, if you, especially if you're, if you're a good reader and you're able to read things fast and it's, you can get through the story. Um, I think it's an enjoyable little side trip. Um, I'm actually, I had to dig through my boxes. Um, but I found I Jedi and I'm going to start it this week. Oh, I think, congratulations. um, but they're just like the first book is like 370 yeah, just under pages. 400. Um, but the other two slave ships, like three twenty something, and then hard merchandise is like three thirty something, uh, so they're they're all three not super super long, fun reads. Um, you get a lot of you get a lot of face time with uh, bounty hunters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like this if boss you, better um, than a lot of bosks. If you want some good face time with bounty hunters, you could read uh, Tooth and Claw, featuring Bosk. Yeah, you just get the one though. Um, what was the name of the the cool, trifecta man. of bounty hunters? Was it Dengar, Boba, and Boss that made up? Was it Crate's Claw? If it's got the word claw in it, it involved Boss. Remember, it was from, from a certain point of view. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. I don't think IG-11 or IG-88 was involved. IG-88 was when Dengar and IG-88 were working together and tried to screw over Boba. Anyway, there's a lot. There's some pretty good bounty hunter content yeah. in that book. What's crazy is Dengar is like one of the best of the best, but in the bounty hunter wars, he's he comes off kind of green. Yeah, he comes off kind of like a goon in anything I've ever read that he's in. Yeah, even even when he does stuff right, I'm like, yeah. I really like Dengar. I hope we get more content with him. I want to see about his transition into the uh, android that he appeared as in. Uh, oh Rise yeah, of Skywalker. Like hasn't been officially confirmed ever, but it looks just like him. And his name is Rothgar Dang versus <laughs> Dengar. Um, Super subtle. Yeah, but it's a really cool. I think it's a cool. Here's the thing: is that especially with Star Wars, I think Marvel fans have this down. But you've got to be able to take a little side trip and enjoy the story that you're looking at, reading, watching, or whatever mm-hmm. for what it is. And if it's not a part of the main story, that's okay. Are you looking for a good story? The Bounty Hunter Wars within themselves is a fun story. There's a lot of pieces. But again, if you have some time to sit down and read it, or if you are an audiobook kind of person, you can find them. They're only about three hours each. So you could burn through all three stories, all three books that are, it's one story, but all three books, um, basically before you would read or listen to a regular book. And you would basically get the gist of it. Um, Anyway, so we're about out of time. And uh, any last thoughts? No, I mean, I apologize that my thoughts are jumbled and I, it's a uh, good series. <laughs> Try it out. Uh, I feel like the song Christmas Shoes, this, this oh birthday God. episode has not been all I cracked up to be. <laughs> I wanted to do a huge Boba Fett Sarah tribute and it happens to land on the day after we just finished like a really crazy, crazy <laughs> season. Um, but this <laughs> series does contribute <laughs> to why Boba Fett's one of my favorites. <laughs> Um, if you were ever to find a way to go online and read mm-hmm. Boba Fett's mm-hmm. profile mm-hmm. from uh, the Essential Guide to Star Wars characters, mm-hmm. there's a lot of information there um, about what he's done during his time, mm-hmm. and then of course the Mandalorian vindicated him. Yes. So uh, there are a lot of things that these books answer, and they're the only time the questions get answered about how Boba survives, what happens to him post return of the Jedi pre all these other books later in the sh- in the, in the timeline. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm looking forward to some new information about what happened. Is it going to look anything at all like this where it's Dengar saving him and just kind of, you know, partnering mm-hmm. up with them? Uh, does he get up by himself? Do the Tuscans get him out? Do the Jawas blow up the Sarlacc for parts? Mm. You know, there's a lot of questions there that we don't know the answer to. Uh, it seems like maybe the crate dragon ate the Sarlacc. Which is a crazy concept. Mm. But again, back in the 90s, a crate dragon was like the size of, you know, a house versus the size of a neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So it's a complete, it's just a lot of things have changed. Well, it but was it's, a big one. Yeah. 
Anyways, cool concepts. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions, please let us know. I know we were all over the place, um, but we will be here next week. Remember, may the force be with you always. And also remember, I don't want to come up with any clever to tie it in, but remember, <laughs> the only family you have here is me. See you next time.